So in our last section, we're going to talk about a lot of different things, but they all relate to human humans and disease. So treatment of diseases and product, production of medicine have improved greatly um, with many bio, biotechnology applications. Um, in a perfect world, we could use it to prevent all diseases um, that may not actually be feasible. Um, and then you also get into ethical questions if you're trying to edit people's DNA and things like that. Um, so next best thing would be to cure diseases. Um, also may not be feasible, may be possible in some cases, currently not possible in all cases. So the next best thing then is to treat diseases. Um, and that is where we see the most advancement in biotechnology is treatment of diseases with better medications, um, better production, more efficient production, and wider availability. So a fantastic example of how biotechnology has been used in the treatment of disease is in the production of insulin. So insulin is a chronic disease where your body cannot, I'm sorry, diabetes is a chronic disease in which your body can't produce insulin. So insulin is required to break down sugar in your blood. Um, there are many complications from this. Um, besides the spike in blood sugar, you also get a vascular disease, kidney damage, and nerve damage. Um, so... Beginning in the 80s, insulin was available for people to use. Um, so if your body couldn't produce insulin, you could inject your own. But initially, it was only available when it was extracted from the pancreas of cattle and pig who were slaughtered for food. Um, so it was, it was hard to get a lot of quantity of it. It was very expensive. Um, and so um, it was often difficult to get the amount of insulin that people needed. But in 1982, um, a scientist used restriction enzymes to cut um, the human DNA sequence for the production of insulin and to insert it into E. coli. So they made a transgenic organism where the E. coli now carried the gene to produce insulin. In cloning this gene, um, researchers were able to produce literally vats and vats of insulin because bacteria are really easy to grow and you can grow them in huge quantities and they express the gene just like we would. Um, so at that point, the drug became uh, available in much larger quantities and made available for more people with diabetes. It was the first genetically engineered drug that was approved by the FDA um, and still helps millions and millions of people. So um, this also, this insulin production also started a biotech revolution. Um, applying this general uh, biotech process to um, treatment of disease has led to more than 1,500 companies who work with recombinant DNA technologies, and um, they generate profits of more than 400, sorry, 40 billion dollars a year. So this is a huge, huge industry. Um, a couple of other examples of. Um, this uh, biotech application and the production of uh, medication um, or other, not necessarily medications, but um, other um, human products is human growth hormone. So this is uh, produced in the pituitary, which is um, part of your brain. And um, if you have a deficiency in human growth hormone, this can lead to dwarfism, um, but uh, HGH can now be produced by transgenic uh, bacteria um, and is used to um, treat dwarfism. It's also used to treat um, uh, individuals who are batting, battling diseases such as age, who face um, huge amounts of weight loss. And so before using transgenic bacteria, um, it actually had to um, extract human growth hormone from pituitary glands of humans 
uh, sorry, of human cadavers. Um, and so uh, it was very inefficient. You couldn't, it was very, very expensive. Uh, one sort of unintentional side effect is this is the fact that um, athletes now have access to this human growth hormone, which has uh, caused uh, some scandals in uh, several different uh, arenas, such as swimming, cycling, uh, and other things. Another example is erythropoietin. Um, this is produced in kidneys, um, and um, it is uh, it helps to regulate the production of red blood cells. So erythropoietin is used to treat um, clinical conditions that result in anemia, um, and which is a, a low amount of red blood cells that causes a decrease in um, oxygen transportation in uh, your blood to your blood to your tissues and to your cells. Um, using biotechnology, this can now be produced from cells um, derived from hamster ovaries um, and um, used to and is available now to treat many different forms of anemia. Uh, this is the molecule that you hear about when or the medication, I guess you'd say, that you hear about when people are caught uh, in blood doping. Um, because this increases your red blood cells, which means uh, you have better oxygen flow throughout your body, which makes your body better able to um, perform physical activity. Now, there's a consequence of this. By increasing your red blood cells, there's a risk of heart attack because your blood becomes thicker. So um, it's not without its consequences. But if you're using it um, in a med medically prescribed fashion, um, it's actually quite effective for anemia. Uh, biotechnology can also is also useful in gene therapy, um, which is the uh, diagnosis and prevention of genetic disease. Um, so far, it has largely been limited, um, but uh, one of the things that it is very useful for is um, screening for genetic. Gen I'm sorry, genetic disorders. Um, now there are several different. Uh, reasons that you might want to be screened for a genetic disorder. One is to determine if a given set of parents is likely to produce a baby with a genetic disease. Um, so you might want to know if, uh, you, if your family has a history of, say, Tay-Sachs or cystic fibrosis, sickle cell anemia. How likely is it that you and your partner would have a child with this disease? Um, so it can be very beneficial um, in helping families with their family planning or simply planning for when they have families. Um, and then, of course, you would combine this with um, genetic counseling. Um, and in the case of Tay-Sachs, um, since screening began in 1969, incidence of Tay-Sachs has actually been reduced by 75% because people are participating who think that uh, there's a good chance are participating in uh, screening for genetic disorders. Um, you might want to know, will a baby be born with a genetic disease? Um, so you can determine this using something called chorionic villus sampling. This is a technique um, where um, the amniotic fluid uh, or fetal cells are uh, samples taken from the fetus and then uh, genetic analysis is performed to determine if an individual is actually going to have a particular disease. Um, so um, if you know that an individual is going to have a disease, you can um, actually prepare a little bit better. And in fact, uh, one example of a technology application to um, a genetic disease is uh, something called SCID, Severe Combined Immunodeficiency. Um, this is um, the uh, bubble boy disease, if you've heard of that. Um, these are individuals who are severely immunocompromised. So this means that um, they are very easily infected by um, diseases. And so um, one um, 
reasonably successful tech biotech treatment um, is for skid. Um, in this disease, uh, stem cells are removed from the individual with skid. Um, stem cells are special cells in your bone marrow that basically can um, be switched to develop into any other type of cell in your body. So they're sort of like blank slates. Um, and so you can, um, with in the case of uh, skids, the malfunctioning gene disrupts normal white blood cell production, which is important in your immune system immune system defenses. Um, but they have been able to extract stem stem cells and then infect those stem cells with a transgenic virus with the functioning gene. So this is uh, sort of similar to CRISPR. Um, and then that virus would actually insert the correct gene into the genome of those stem cells, which would then cause those cells to produce white blood cells as they should be. Um, so this strategy did work well in several cases of SCID. Um, it's currently suspended because there were two patients that died um, from illnesses related to the treatment. So again, there are some promising things with biotechnology, but there is potentially uh, some problems as well. Another reason you might want to be screened for genetic diseases um, is to determine how likely you are to develop a genetic disease later in life. Um, now, this is important because early detection in many diseases um, can greatly enhance the ability to treat the disease and um, reduce the risk of se se severe illness and death. So, um, this is uh, one reason that they say early detection saves lives. Now you can do this um, at any point. You can have your genome scanned for particular uh, cancer markers and other, other diseases. So if gene therapy is so fantastic, why has it had such a poor record of success um, in actually curing diseases? There are several reasons for this.